G'day, it's Bill here from Sidereal Trading. We're in the middle of a bit of a flurry of new products as astronomy equipment companies upgrade their existing camera tracking mounts to small, full go-to equatorials. We've just received a batch of Ioptron Sky Hunters, that's these guys. I think the Sky Hunter is about the smallest of the proper go-to mounts and it's good for a camera with a medium-sized lens or maybe a, a long one if you've got it really well set up. Um, alternatively, you can use it on a small refractor like this guy or a red cat or something. So let's have a look at it. The Sky Hunter comes in a couple of different variants. I'm going to show you the EQ version. Um, the AZ version is, exact, is exactly the same. Um, this one I've got here doesn't have an eye polar, uh, but we'll grab one and show you how that works as well. So let's open these things up, shall we? Okay, this is the um, the Ioptron 3221. It's a it's a completely standard tripod. Um, it's got it's a nice tripod. I like it. It's got leg braces. Um, the tripod itself is topped with a three inch uh, three eight inch bolt. With, which connects to most light mounts or wedges. Let's get the plastic off. Um, uh, more plastic. It always comes with you. All right. The thing that's different about this tripod is that um, uh, it's, uh, this one's actually called the 3221 SH version for the Sky Hunter. The thing about it is it comes with this, that thing. That's a peer extension tube. Um, you'll use this if there's a risk that your telescope or camera is going to crash into the legs of the tripod. And there it is. That's pretty simple, really. Okay, all right. Oh, hang on, let's move that. All right. Okay, inside the box we have... Uh, oh, there's the quick start guide. You need to get the long instructions off the website. Then, let's see, we'll start with the USB charging cable. Um, there's a 1.35 kilogram counterweight and bar... Oh, bar. Um, the next thing is the wedge. It's, uh, it's an odd shape, actually. Uh, it has to cope with the Sky Hunter. And finally, the Sky Hunter itself. Oh, let's get rid of that. Oh. Okay, um, here it is. Um, it's, uh, oh, it's unlocked. Um, it's pretty light, actually. It's, um, so there you go. Okay, I wonder if it's battery and build. Yeah, it is, there. Oh, he thinks we're in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, I'll turn it off. Alright, there you go. Now the Sky Hunter itself is very small. It's and it's clearly designed by the same people who did the Sky Tracker and the Sky Guider. That's these two guys. Um, it's got a rated capacity of about five kilograms, so it should be able to hold up the scope that we use for astrophotography courses, no worries. Um, it's got its own battery, uh, it's a LiPo, and it's pretty easy to pop off the cover. Um, it's a lot better than before. Getting a battery out of these guys is a nightmare, but I'm getting quite good at it. I've done it a couple of dozen times now. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that there's no ST4 cable. Um, so Ioptron has finally stepped out of the 1990s into pulse guiding, which I think that means you're going to have to get into ASCOM, um, but it also means that you can guide the mount through PhD. Okay, here it is all spread around the desk. Um, we'll start with the tripod. Now, I don't have to tell you how to put up a tripod. Um, the thing you might want to know about is this tripod extension here. Um, it's simply a tube with a 3.8 bolt at the top and a 3.8 bolt at the bottom. You just put it on top of the tripod head there. Um, there's, uh, it, just, it just lifts up your whole, uh, your whole rig. And the reason is if you've got a longish refractor like this one, a little bit heavy, um, and if it's without that, you can have the camera interacting, i.e. crashing, with the leg on the tripod, and that's a bad thing. So um, that, this thing helps a lot there. Put that down. Uh, now the wedge. The wedge, here it is. This is the Ioptron wedge, which turns the rig from an Altaz into an equatorial mount. You can get the Sky Hunter without the wedge if you're into simply into viewing or maybe planetary imaging. Um, it'd be a really good mount coupled with a small lunt solar scope or something like that. Um, you'll notice that it's got an odd shape uh, compared to the normal Ioptron wedge. That's because the bottom end of the Sky Hunter, that's this part here, when, uh, where the RA, RA axis motor has an overhang. Um, so if you're close to the equator, it's going to run into the wedge down there and, and basically stop. You'll also notice a couple of holes with a bolt in one of them. 
um, you have to put the bolts into a hole that corresponds with your latitude. Now, I've organized mine so that the saddle for the telescope is directly above the middle of the tripod. Um, that puts the center of gravity of the load above the middle of the tripod. Obviously, it's gonna depend on what you're gonna put on top of the Sky Hunter. Um, and the wedge just goes onto the pier like this. Plain old screw. Uh, so, the Sky Hunter. If you look at it, the Sky Hunter's got a fairly familiar look. Um, you can see it's two belt-driven motors uh, just put together. Um, the RA is at the bottom here, not that one. Um, there's a Vixen-sized dovetail where it goes onto the wedge. Um, there's a control panel, little tiny little thing there. Um, it tells you what rate you're running, solar, lunar, uh, half sidereal or sidereal. It also tells you which hemisphere it's in so you know it's running the right way. Um, bipolar. Almost as an aside, if you want good polar alignment, you should get the iPolar version. It just goes on like this, like that, and it, oh, let's put that there, so tighten that. Um, the iPolar is a fast and accurate way of getting good polar alignment, but you do need a laptop to run it. Um, so let's put it on the wedge. Let's tighten that there, and that goes on like that. Okay, um, counterweight. The counterweight goes on the bottom here, just on that little guy. Um, I'm about to put a refractor on it, this one. Um, the counterweight's gonna have to be right pretty much at the bottom. If you're using a camera lens, it's gonna be a lot lighter, so that counterweight's gonna be further up the bar. Um, let's see, put that on. Here's the refractor we use in our classes. It's a Skywatcher ED72 with a flattener and a DSLR, and it weighs about three kilos. So that just goes on in the same way as any refractor does, straight onto the Vixen bar. Um, I'll balance it and we'll move around the desk. Okay, I've balanced the rig now by moving the scope up and down the saddle and uh, moving the counterweight up and down the bar. So let's see how it runs. There's a couple of different ways of using the mount. The easiest one is by using your iPhone, uh, your, your phone. The app for iPhones is Commander Lite and it's free off the App Store. So I've got it here, here on my phone and I'm also gonna have to use my glasses. Now before you launch the app, turn on the mount and connect to the Wi-Fi. I've already done that. Uh, it's going to be called SH with some numbers after it. Next, you fire up the app. Uh, I won't show you how, how it works here. It's like having a simple hand controller. You can slew to named stars or other targets and it'll track them nicely as long as the polar alignment is good of course. Um, and this is great for short focal length photography. Um, let's go to Alpha Centauri. Let's see, slew to famous stars. Um, Acrux B, that'll do. Uh, confirm the slew, it should do some stuff. Alpha Centauri is fairly low, at the, uh, low in, the, uh, uh, in the sky at this time of day. There you go. If you're into visual work, having a planetarium program like Sky Safari is great. It gives you a map and you can select targets and salute to them. Um, you connect your phone's Wi-Fi, which I've just done, um, and you bring up Sky Safari and connect to it. It makes nice ding sounds. Um, my phone knows that the mount is already connected to Alpha Centauri because we went there before um, in the Commander Life app. Um, so let's, let's select something else, shall we? Um, uh, Mia Placidus? Let's have a look. Go to. And off she goes. Sky Safari is especially good for viewing because you can get a map there and you can just noodle around the sky. Come on. There we go. Right, it's getting more sophisticated now. This is how you get longer exposures or you want to use a longer focal length like, like this refractor. Um, polar alignment in this case is going to be a lot more critical, so you use your, uh, your eye polar and you're going to be wanting to auto guide your mount with, uh, yeah, for, to get those longer exposures. Um, this, this guy here is the auto guider. Um, it's, this one's a QHY brand, it's a 30 millimeter F4. I haven't cabled it in, um, so you can actually see what's what. Um, you can end up with a lot of cables. Your laptop, mine is very old, uh, is going to need to have Wi-Fi obviously, and you're also going to need to have the latest ASCOM communication platform. Um, from memory, it's version 6.6 .6 at the moment. Um, you'll also need the Commander program, which is that guy, off the iOptron webpage. Now that's free. Uh, you connect your laptop's Wi-Fi directly to the mount, uh, and then you fire up Commander, which is the, that guy. 
Um, now, Commander talks with ASCOM, meaning PhD, the auto guiding program, can connect to the mount simultaneously because PhD also talks ASCOM. You're not going to be getting rid of many cables with the Wi Fi though. Um, even though I used a DSLR, um, I still had to have a cable between the guide camera and the computer. Uh, you can also connect through the mount's USB port, and the software is pretty much the same. You just have an extra cable going from the USB port, which is there, to your computer. So let's see. You basically just press the buttons, uh, and it salutes. Because the whole thing is ASCOM enabled, uh, everything talks to everything else, which means that you can have Sequence Generator Pro or Voyager or Nina or anything like that uh, running, running the show. Um, and yeah, it's a full astrophotography rig, so it goes up from there. You can get as sophisticated as you like. The last thing I want to talk about is this. It's quite popular to use the William Optics Wedge for the Sky Guider and Sky Tracker instead of the plain Ioptron ones. They're smoother to adjust, a bit more precise, and they're a nice bit of bling as well. But because the wedge for the Sky Hunter is a different shape, this one, there's been some discussion about whether you can successfully use it or not. Now, some people have been quite certain that you can't polar align with it. Well, we put one together to see, and we found that it's going to depend on where you're observing from. Here's the William Optics wedge, and it goes on in nearly the same way. As you can see, there's plenty of room at the back there. You'll notice that it goes on backwards. These ones are set up like that. This one's set up like that. So the scope is going to look to the pole like that. What that means is you won't be able to use the dial on the wedge in quite the same way. There's the dial. You have to subtract your latitude from 90. Now, I took this upstairs and I attached my phone with a polar alignment app running. That way it shows the actual altitude angle. The first sequence is with the altitude pin put in at the high position, so up to around about 60 degrees on the wedge. You'll notice we got about as far as 27 degrees of altitude, and it adjusted up to around about 57 degrees. After we swapped the pin to the low position, so which is down around 20 degrees on the wedge, we were able to adjust from about 52 degrees of altitude to around about 82 degrees. So that all means that if you live between about 28 degrees latitude and the pole, that's north or south, you'll be able to polar align and use the William Optics wedge. That covers places like Canada, pretty much all of Europe, most of the United States, not Hawaii, Florida and Texas, um, Russia, the northern half of China, the southern half of Australia, and the southern parts of South America and Africa. Oh, and New Zealand, but we all know that's really part of Australia. This is a fairly rough measurement, so if you're close to the shaded area, you'll have to do some extra research. Okay, so that's about it from here. If you like the video, do the normal things. Like, rate, tell your friends. I'm Bill from Sidereal Trading, and I'll see you next time. You know that's going in the, uh, in the video.